Welcome to My Creative Corner 3, a podcast about quilting, crafting, creativity, with a dash of garden, chatting about current interests, and life in my northern town. You can find show notes at mycreativecorner3.com. You can also find all of my social media, how to purchase a virtual cup of coffee, and all events on the website. Please feel free to stop by and leave a comment. I really appreciate everyone who listens. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, everyone. It's November 3rd. How was your Halloween? October was a busy month, wasn't it? It was full of all kinds of roller coaster rides for me. And I thought we would catch up in today's chat. I'm going to talk to you about my fall and winter of finishes. And I have several finishes to talk about and some, you know, like incremental finishes on the way to a final project. And I also went to a conference this week for work regarding um, burnout. It was a mandatory training and I left a little disappointed because it was really basic information and the person uh, with two presenters and they are used to working with children. So it didn't really resonate well with me on how to take care of yourself or things. So I've been thinking since this conference, if I were to teach a class or if I'm to teach to my clients how to deal with burnout, and this can be in any area of life, right? It can be quilting burnout. It can be career burnout. It can be burnout from having a chronic illness like long COVID. It can be situations in life. So many, but I think the basic truth of how I've dealt with it and what I am finding on my journey is something that I want to share with you today. Well, fall has officially hit us and all of the leaves are brown and down and the skies are gray. Yeah, that sounds like the mamas and the papas. I think of it every year. And if you've heard that before, I'm sorry. But The good news is this year, we bought a rake for our tractor, our yard tractor, and um, I'm not worrying about it. That's something that we can use to rake it up, and that will be something that um, I don't have to have the mental space for, and I feel really good about it because you really can't find people to come do it during the very short window of time because everybody's leaves come down at the same time. And if we're lucky, we'll get them raked up and put to the road for the city to come pick up and put on the compost heap before the first snow. If that doesn't happen until spring, so be it. Because you know what? They have found that leaving leaves down as mulch isn't a horrible thing actually lots of things grow and animals and bugs and wildlife you know take advantage of it so you know it's one of those things that has been instilled upon me living in a city that everybody has to have their leaves raked up by a certain time you have to have your yard look a certain way and that isn't the case anymore i mean there are certain rules of social norms that I have to live with that no I don't particularly enjoy but I don't have to worry about it. So I did have a little relapse over the last 10 days or so of long COVID flare-up or possibly catching a virus. It's hard to tell sometimes but my husband did get sick also for a few days so I'm thinking I got sick and then I just take a lot longer to get better. I did wind up having two routine appointments with doctors and there's differing opinions about what what's been going on but the bottom line is um, my pulmonary doctor is updating my medication program with some new medicines for breathing and coping with long COVID and my primary care doctor is encouraging 
the uh, kudos for losing some weight and for lowering my blood sugar and also to encourage me along that journey. And I will say that is one journey I'm burned out on, but I am going to hop back on that path to keep moving along and going in the positive, healthy direction. So during that downtime, I I missed a few days of work and I was able to do some things and I was able to take advantage of the time to do some self-care. And I watched through the second movie of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Extended Cut. I've never done that. I talked last time about working on going through all three movies in small segments, and I was able to do that and also work on a few hand projects. So I really enjoyed the movie. Why um, I've never done it before is because I just can't usually sit still long enough, and I'm always feeling like I should be doing something. And I think that's just a sign of being a working parent. And when you're working, you just have so little time for yourself. And then you you have children that you're raising and so many things. Well, I have to shift gears and let that mindset go and just realize, you know, it's okay to not be doing something all of the time. It's okay to rest. And I've listened to a couple of podcasts and educational articles about rest for chronic illness. And resting doesn't mean taking many naps because sleeping and daytime sleeping just doesn't, I just can't. Um, Sleeping has always been a problem since my thyroid issues. But rest means a lot of times closing your eyes and not listening to anything, not doing anything, and maybe just breathing or meditating for 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to try to engage in that a little bit more, especially like on lunch hours. And, you know, part of my ability to cope with a very busy and stressful life is having a very structured day and routines, which have come back on a small scale, not as much as they were before. And, you know, building in time to just rest. Sometimes sleep a little bit longer on the days that it I can sleep. And sometimes it means just not doing as much busy work. So what have I been doing? Well, you might think this month you just didn't do much. Well, I did. When I sit back and look, I get out my silk and sandal, sandal journal and I recap the end of October every 30th or 31st of the month. And I realized I went to the Grand Rapids area and watched a play that my son is in little shop of horrors. He did a great job. And then all of us went to the apple farm and we went out to dinner with some Highland game friends. That was the one weekend and I really enjoyed it. And I was able to do my job full time. And I did some long arming after my husband and I did some problem solving on the quilt frame. Just a side note, Menard is, Menards is my new best friend on shopping for screws and bolts and all things garden. <laughs> so if you live in the Midwest, Menards has a lot of things that helped me um, assist my husband because he's really more of the person that knows what to look for and how to fix it. But we found knobs and screws at Menards because the Grace Quilt Company doesn't make this frame and hasn't since the year I bought this frame. One replaceable part is the rubber tr- or plastic tracks. They have made a new frame, so they have started to remanufacture that, which is going to extend the life of my long arm. My long arm machine is great. It's this frame rattling by the power of a long arm machine is very hard on a frame. 
and lots of areas needed to be tightened up and some screws were stripped and knobs were stripped and we were able to replace them because Grace Company doesn't have those kind of parts anymore. I've called several times and they go, I'm sorry, man, we haven't made that since 2011. Well, that was the year I bought my frame. So just so you know, when you buy a quilting frame, you know, there's built-in obsolescence just like anything else and a new and better product is always being made. So while you have the frame, you might want to look at buying replacement parts while you have the frame, even if you don't need them, if you plan on having it for a really long time. <laughs> uh, lesson learned. So I did a couple rows on a quilt that I've been very afraid to tackle, and that is my friend Sharon's William Morris quilt. She gave me two of them. They're applique, and this first one is a smaller quilt. It's about 60 by 60, and it is a beautiful William Morris tile print. Uh, print tile applique very intricate and really all it needs is to be outlined in the applique parts in the center and a simple continuous border I'm doing like a swirl and feather and leaf in the outside border and just loops in the inner border to give it some texture you really can't see the stitches because I picked an exact match for the background and I'm feeling more confident and comfortable. The frame is holding really well. So I've got about 25 to 30% of that quilt done. I've been working, it's been on the frame for over a month or six weeks. Just, it's just been hard to get the confidence up to do it. So that leaves Sharon's second quilt and one of my friend's queen size quilts. So, quilting wise. I have finished 12 of the apple blocks from Lori Holt's book, Scrappiness is Happiness. And I have nearly completed assembling the entire quilt. So I decided, you know, she had a real cute layout with apple cores and offsetting the rows with Full different colored apples. So I have red apples and a few green apples. I have a total of 12 of these blocks, which the blocks are nine and a half inches finished, and I have four in a row. So by the time you add sashing and all of that business, it's going to be 40 some inches wide by 50 some inches long because I haven't figured out how wide I want the final border to be. It'll depend on how big this all looks with the sashing in place. And, you know, I really like it. I love making these door banners because you can use them as table toppers. I'm making them for holiday and different seasonal door quilts for work because I have a very large door. I work in healthcare in the building I used to work in used to be a very old hospital a hundred years ago. So the doors are really wide. They're about 50 some inches wide, you know, wide enough for an old fashioned gurney to go through. So it makes a great place to display quilts and it happens to be metal so I can hold them up with magnets. So I got, I think all of my seasonal ones done except for the hexagon flowers, which I will putter with over the winter. And then, so I finished that in my New start is the family favorites um, quilt along with Fat Quarter Shop. And I've been invited to quilt along with them. And they did send me some fabric and the book Family Favorites. So just transparency there that, you know, they did invite me to quilt along. And as a person that is part of their program on promoting things, um, you can't just sign up for that, right? I, I was invited. Um, Family Favorites is the book that you need to purchase from Fat Quarter Shop. And it is by Sharon McConnell and Chelsea Stratton. This has the most beautiful book and most beautiful pictures and featuring their latest line, Strawberry Lemonade. And Laguna Sunrise is also the book is the line quilt line that 
you can buy the kit from Fat Quarter Shop to be able to do this without having to buy all of these. Now, I'm going to say you can do that, but it would be a lovely scrappy quilt. It has um, several blocks that you can mix and match and make your own quilt design too. But the for the Bretley sampler, it has something they're calling a mosaic block, fancy block, happy dance block, kaleidoscope block, and mosaic squares, right? But they're really traditional blocks that they have brought up into modern coloration and they have white backgrounds with bright borders on or bright bindings on their quilts but that's what makes this book so beautiful they have a signature style of specific brights and dainty pretty floral prints with some geometrics and the laguna sunrise uh, line would be absolutely gorgeous. I did purchase strawberry lemonade and a few fat quarters and layer cake, if you remember. And I'm hoarding that because I think I want to make another book or another quilt from this book. And it's, it's another sampler. And I think it's called Starstruck. It's the cover quilt. I really like it. And I'm... Yeah, I'm flipping through the book. It's just so many beautiful, beautiful things in this book that give you some great ideas. Actually, the cover sampler is called Sunrise Sampler. No, it's not. It's Saltwater Sampler. Um, it's all different types of stars, which are my favorite. And they have a very clever um, sashing, which is actually kind of old-fashioned but yet looks very modern with their particular colors and color colorations of their fabric. So I want to say this is a lovely, lovely book. It's $29.95 on the barcode on the back of the book. It is a Fat Quarter Shop company. It's so Emma publication, and they do a fabulous job. And what I like about it is it is very, very user-friendly and how to construct the blocks. If you're a beginner, you could do these. Some of the star blocks might be a little more challenging for you, but there's no reason why as a beginner quilter you couldn't try this. And as a intermediate to advanced, this gives you options on how you could make your own design. But I chose to do what Kimberly is suggesting, and they have a pack of paper piecing pads. Try to say that three times. And I purchased the pa the paper piecing units to help with sharp points because I've gotten frustrated with making blocks and having all my, what do they call them? Truncated triangles. The other part is if you go to the Jolly Jabber, they have coloring sheets so you can distribute your colors evenly. I still have not done that. I will make a color plan a little bit more toward the end of the month. And if you're going to use scraps, they have a fabric requirement sheet. All of these things you can download and print. And I will try to put the link to their blog with all this information and printables in the show notes. So I started that particular quilt and I want to continue to work on finishing the stack of quilt tops now that my long arm is finished or fixed and just whip out all of the, <laughs> whip them out you know just like I don't have a full-time job and a chronic illness that makes me tired right oh my so I'm saying that to myself as a rah rah re. Let's keep going on making a little bit at a time, but mostly finishing over the winter. That seems to be my seasonal pattern. That um, it's too hot to do a lot of long arming in the summertime because my long arm's on the second floor, and it's too hot to just deal with all that fabric and batting. And yet, um, wintertime, it's the perfect temperature up there. And I can work in my office just a little bit, or my sewing space. It's not an office. It's my sewing space. 
my quote studio space. So that's what I'm going to do for the winter. I also finished I'm getting my show notes here, my my crochet pillow. Yes, the granny circles. That was a lovely tutorial that Lori Holt started in the spring, early summer, and she gave some lovely ideas on how to use her chunky thread. And I splurged the summer in buying several skeins of that and I love it. It's 100% cotton and it doesn't make me sneeze and wheeze. It, you know, because some yarns really can do that to me. And the colors are Lori Holt's signature colors. They are amazing. She showed how to finish your granny circles into several projects. And I really wanted to recover a lumbar rectangular pillow. I bought one from Target and I laid out my circles on it. You know, rearranging it like a little design board to not have all the colors in one spot. And then I crocheted them together and crocheted the pillow inside. It The cover does not come off. It'll be a spot wipe. But what was great is I picked this pillow up at Target on sale for $10 when I was near a Target, which I don't have one close by, which is a good thing because I would be there way too much. But it looks great with my collection of pillows. And this one is really bright, has a retro vibe, yet modern bright colors. I chose to put them together with the one of the darker pink yarns that she has. And man, I love it. I would like to try a few more projects with this chunky thread. Um, I saw a really pretty granny square Christmas quilt with um, you make my granny squares and then every other square the person had applique, crochet, you know, snowmen, things like that. Maybe someday. It's I have to really, really. <laughs> plan that because you know crochet is not super fast but what's fun about granny square projects is it's block based you just do a few put them down pick them up put a, do a few and it's not like trying to do an entire blanket or scarf or the wrap that I picked back up remember that knit wrap yes I, I have it's a sweater wrap and I picked that back up so that's a start, a yarn start. So I, I also found out that crochet must be really hot right now because when I post anything crochet, I get a lot of views on both YouTube and my other sites. So what have I stopped in um, things right now is I've stopped posting long videos on YouTube with being sick and I just can't think fast enough on my feet to do a speak along type of a thing, <laughs> speak along video or a tutorial. Anyway, it takes up too much brain space. So I have stopped doing that, but I have picked back up doing shorts. Shorts are fun. Um, they can take just as long as some videos in a long form to do, but I really like doing them because you can do them on your phone. You you can do impromptu clips as you go along through your day. And there's a lot of templates out there that are really user friendly now. And I've also employed the use of something my phone comes with, which is an AI based um, program that helps you write captions. Now my Saturday morning blog post is directly me writing, but sometimes I need help with my grammar punctuation and the brain fog that I have in writing really nice, is correct and fun captions for social media. So you'll be able to tell the difference. The ones that seem to be uh, choppy or weird are probably me writing. <laughs> so I've not been able to pick writing back up, but I have continued with journaling. So those are several of them, but I really pushed this month to finish my haunted 
Halloween. What does it say? Happy Haunting on it. With the full moon. It was a free Halloween sampler last year in cross stitch. I used DMC thread. I purchased a hand dyed pistachio um, eight of cloth. It was about a 14 count, but by the time it's hand dyed, it shrinks down a little bit. I got it done in time for Halloween. I was so thrilled. I even put the sparkle stars in the background. It is completely stitched and I have a very spooky frame that I think at one time it's, it's probably you know from the 1920s that was on the back of a dresser and had a mirror in it and it flips over you know those wooden things that were screwed into the top of a dresser or vanity. The mirror is about 8 by 10 so the glass broke a long time ago and I found this in some of the things that my mother-in-law had in her apartment. I'm like, this would be perfect for a spooky Halloween cross stitch. And I'm not going to permanently glue it in there so that, you know, maybe it would make a very cute finish for a different season or if you put Christmas things on it, it could be fun. So I finished that particular cross stitch and I picked back up and I'm going to finish stitch card N for cross stitch. It's a Lori Holt little, um, each little motif is about three inches and they are on an index or a recipe card type of situation in the little pattern kit. I chose to put them in a two by two arrangement and I am on the very last yet my favorite motif in this. I, it had a snail, a pretty posy, and a, what's the first one? A gnome. How could I forget? And the last one is a red and white spotted mushroom. And I plan on working on the final finishes of all of these cross stitch projects I have in a basket that have not been finished over the last year or two. I've only done what we call a final finish on a handful of those projects and I have probably six to ten in there. I want to frame a few. I want to make little tiny pin cushions out of a couple and then I will make a decision on if I want to do a different type of cross stitch for Christmas, there's a free one on Fat Quarter Shop from last year that's very pretty. Um, there's one from two years ago that I like even better that's smaller and not as much full coverage stitching. Or I may just put that on the back burner and pull out the Tiny Town Halloween themed one that <laughs> I bought when I made a visit to Virginia Beach a couple years ago. Plus, I have all of my tea time cross stitch um, patterns that I purchased and it has silk threads and I didn't have a good time using the silk threads because of the needle. I need to use an easy thread needle for cross stitch because I just can't see and my balance is not great to thread a regular needle but I may try using that thread again. I spent a fortune on that plus I've also fallen in love with Cosmo which is a Japanese floss that I know my local quilt shop has and I've purchased several more skeins there. So I might buy a Cosmo bundle and try stitching some of those tea time cross stitches toward the spring. So what have I also planned to start in my life? Well, I decided to join the Lori Holt Club at my local quilt shop. They're going to meet one Wednesday a month for two hours from noon to two. The good news is I usually have noon to about 1, 1 available on the Wednesday of the month they are meeting. It costs like five bucks, but I can get a lot of help from the quilt shop owner who is a huge big time Lori Holt fan. She has the new owner is called Compass Star Quilt Shop which is my local quilt shop and she has all Lori Holt, Tilda, all the new and up and coming lines, Tula Pink, oh, all those. Have you seen Tula's new line? I digress. Let's go back to Lori Holt. Anyway, I'm going to join that and I'm, I'm pulled out my Stitchy Stars 
sampler. It's a table runner with Lori Holt stars, but I struggle sometimes with her directions and having my points meet. She told me that she would love to see the pattern and to help me. And I think if we need to, I may need to re-engineer the pattern a little bit for my brain and the ability to sew them together because you know points as I said earlier sometimes are hard so I have several of the blocks done in the series but the last two I did stink and the points are not great and they're crooked and I'm going to throw those blocks away but I've got a lot of the fabric so I can go back to the drawing board and start again I'm also continuing to go to the local quilt guild. It's growing exponentially. It had about a dozen people when I started this summer, and we're up to between 20 and 25 people who have joined. And I need to work on the placemats. I haven't done any of that. And since I have got another book to review here, I'm going to start the... Fat Quarter Challenge because I found the pattern I want to do for the Fat Quarters that I have. So what this game is, is that we put like six to eight Fat Quarters in a little bag and they had to go together. The challenge is that the person grabbed a bag and they did not know who put those Fat Quarters in. And then you make something with those fat quarters. And at the Christmas party, you put the top and all the leftovers, if there are any. The rules are you can make as big or small of a quilt or many projects, a bag, whatever, with that. And you put the top or the project in a bag or the bag. And the person who owned that bag gets the quilt back while making a quilt and I found the quilt so anyone from quilt guild listening um yeah you might want to plug your ears a little bit because what I'm doing is something that's in the Lori Holt new book which I have been given to review for the podcast by Fat Quarter Shop and it is fabulous it's fabulous so let's talk about it The book is called Prairie Home. It honors Lori's ancestors who came across the prairie. You want to watch the video promoting this book that Kimberly Jolly and Lori did. It showed every quilt in this book, which there are many. She is brilliant in that she has added some old favorites as well as many new ones. The old favorites being patterns that you couldn't buy like they were in Riley Blake kits or I don't know some other reason like maybe they were in other types of bundles or quilt alongs that had multiple designers where the the maybe you can't find that pattern online but she broke it down into four seasons spring fall summer winter so overall Each season has about 10 to 12 projects. There is a table topper in every season. There are a table runner for most of the seasons. And there are themed pictorial quilts for spring. There's like flowers and baskets and plaid and posies and the summer same thing there's baskets ohio stars picnic quilts sunflowers stars and pinwheels wildflower runners in the fall there's a table topper that's a friendship star plaid pumpkin table topper the prairie crochet quilt what does that one look like i've looked at this book a thousand times but i'm like drawing a blank on which one that is and it is a pixel type quilt um it looks like a granny square yes it does of course it does it that one would be a fantastic one to make as a scrappy one she has one that looks like some of her cross stitch patterns it says home sweet home 
And the Christmas ones are fabulous. That There's a wagon wheels quilt, of course, in the fall to honor her prairie ancestors as well as a bonnet. So Christmas time has Mama's red quilt, long underwear, the red handles. Do you remember those red long johns? Um, long handles is what my family used to call them, and they were usually red. Shoe fly, winter quilts, Christmas trees, stars. This book is packed. It's beautifully photographed, and Lori's patterns are extremely detailed, colored well. You have every everything you should know is listed. It's a big, thick book. It's spiral bound, which is a must for Lori. This is an expensive book. However, I'm going to say this is going to be a book that you're going to be using for years. I mean, there is a decade's worth of quilts that if you're going to make all of these, it would take you a long, long time. There's a lot of go-to quilts. There's things you could use. The table toppers is baby quilts. And you could make these your own by taking blocks and putting them in your own layout and mix and matching some of her layouts with the blocks. This book on the back, it says it's $39.95, but I think with it being spiral bound and color, it's another It's So Emma publication, which is a fat quarter shop owned company, totally worth the money. And it, it's something that I would highly recommend. Even if you are not a Lori Holt fan, it has a lot of classic quilts. It's not necessarily something that you would have to use her fabrics in. You could make any and all of these um, stash quilts. Um, you could make them scrappy. You could do, I mean, so many of these are, she designed them to be stash busters and honoring her grandparents and her, oh, it just, listening to her talk about it is so awesome in the YouTube video, which I would highly recommend. I'm going to take a little pause here, catch my breath, and then we're going to talk about burnout. All right. The one thing about burnout is I'm not going to tell you what it is. You all know what it is. Have you ever sat in your sewing room and everything you had looked like it needed to go in the trash? You couldn't touch your sewing machine for anything. Looking at a pattern, you couldn't find anything anything that appealed to you yet you had this burdening guilt that you had invested all of this time and money in something that you're not so sure you even want to do anymore yeah I've been there I've done it with quilting I've done it with knitting I've done it with crochet I've done it with cross stitch in fact I said I was never going to cross stitch again until I got long COVID and tried it because the new patterns and new colors, everything available out there made it appealing again. I have had mental blocks. I really like to doodle. I like to paint. I like to zentangle. I like to do mixed media. But you know what? I have tried it all and mastered only one or two things. Quilting's one I feel like I've got a better handle on. And I know the basics for the rest. Just the basics. I've taken very few classes. I've fumbled my way along. And every once in a while, when you hit burnout with crafting, it's hard because when you hit burnout in other areas of your life, the first thing they always say to you is you need to journal, you need to take care of yourself, and you need to find a hobby, a creative hobby. But what if I'm burned out on all of that stuff, right? So I thought that was part of the problem I walked away from the training on Friday in avoiding burnout is I know all about self-care. I know about the asking for help. I know about scaling back. I know about being a time manager and using all of the time management skills and not trying to multitask and not trying to say yes to everything. But sometimes there are seasons in life where you don't have that luxury. I think we're in it now. In my world, my husband's job is furloughing voluntarily people. 
And if they don't get volunteers, they're going to do more. That is another word for layoff. Um, my business is trying to shore up its finances. It's a nonprofit. And, you know, that's kind of scary because some businesses are being contracted out at some parts of our business and it's never been done before and some things have closed and opened over the years that were grant funded through my business but it's a different season it's a different time and of course we have the election stress which I'm not talking politics here but election cycle is usually very very stressful for me and world news is very stressful for me. And this year, it's been more stressful than um, any other year of my life. And maybe that's because I've not been well. And so, you know, that's where you walk away from a conference and they say, oh, just take care of yourself. Make sure you journal. Find trusted friends at work. Places where you can unload. Yeah, have you tried that and had it all go right back to the bus and things that you were trying to problem solve and vent get turned on you sure we all have and that's the nature of work so you try to find balance outside of work I work in healthcare, and sometimes healthcare is the worst about trying to help the people who do a very difficult job in very difficult times. And you know what? In healthcare, it's been a difficult time for a long, long time, well before the pandemic. It's been financially difficult. It's been difficult with different types of illnesses and staffing and all of the things. So I'm preaching to the choir when I say, you know what burnout is. So I'm not going to waste too much time talking about it. But when you start having the feelings that Things are just not great and you don't have any energy and nothing is exciting. And we're not talking depression or basically chronic illness, brain fog and that. This is a different type of feeling. So you have to be able to try to sort it out. And I think though the biggest thing I did in over the lifetime of working in the field that I've worked in for over 30 years and you know coming from a background of if you work hard enough everything is going to to go your way um, which my parents never taught me that but it was a cultural thing right if you work hard enough you can be anything you want to be and it's all going to work out great and you can achieve whatever the myth mythical magical American dream is I live in America and we have that saying the American dream, which is that you own your own home, you're going to drive at least one, maybe two cars, you can have whatever dream job you want, and your needs will be met. But sometimes it's not that way. It's not that way. And I figured that out pretty early in life, because I got married young and had children young. And I was a overachiever in school, I worked my butt off in school and in college. I worked jobs from a very young age, saved money. I was frugal. I did all the things. And it led to me feeling burned out before I even got to college, right? You've probably been there if you are a person who has really worked hard your whole life. So what I found is you have to figure out a lot of things about yourself first before you start applying things that might work. So this is what I found about me. First of all, you need to find where you get your energy. Are you an introvert, an extrovert? I'm an introvert. So a lot of things that people talk about in these conferences don't apply. Introverts get their energy from being alone, processing things on their own through crafts or hobbies or personal pursuits or movies or Legos or whatever it is you love to do. And it gives you energy back because peopling drains me. I work in a peopling profession. After a 40 hour work week, I want to go home and not speak to anybody. And my husband and I usually don't. On Friday nights, we usually order pizza and go out for wings or whatever, have lighthearted chat about problems in our work week. 
And then we sit and watch stupid videos or our subscriptions or maybe football game on Friday. Not much happens on a Friday. We go to bed relatively early and sleep as late as we can on a Saturday to try to regain some of the energy. Now, if you're an extrovert, you are going to want to go out. You're going to want to do things. You want to be around your people. You're going to find your tribe. You're going to want to have all of the people around you at events and gatherings and girls nights out and girls weekends and probably quilt retreats and all of those things because they energize you. That stuff drains me and I need a month or two to recuperate. So going to a play I love because I can go there. It's social, it's in a crowd, but yet it's a private journey of experience. Same with concerts. Did I tell you I went to a little rock, um, Rocky Horror Picture Show? Yes. Um, it was fun because I could watch the show. It had a shadow cast. People dressed up. Yet I left and came home. It was a couple of hours worth of an experience. And yet I met a friend there and saw several people I knew who are co-workers. We didn't talk shop. We had lighthearted conversation and came home. It was the moderate introvert um, experience. I could get out. I could experience the theater. I was at a, as a, at a casino. I spent a couple bucks and then came home. So finding out where you get your energy. You also need to do some time management in your life. And I need routines. So you set whatever works for you. I stopped trying to do all the fly lady things because it doesn't work for me currently in my life, but I do try to focus on things in 15 minute increments. And then when I focus on it and work hard in the 15 minutes, I take a break and move on to something else. So what are some other things? Well, I'm going to tell you journaling every day. Journal, journal, journal. I think journaling has made a massive improvement. I'm able to vent as much as I want. I can say whatever I want, but at the same time, temper it with some sort of gratitude practice. You need to also, you know, focus on some you know, of your spiritual life, possibly in your journaling, however you do that. And I also want to tell you that I, I am a Silk and Sander affiliate now. I love these journals. They have a lot of great science-based exercises. She does a daily less than 10 minute chat in every day that you can listen to. There's affirmations, positivity, gratitude practices, and November's theme is joy. How to find joy and carry it through the holidays. There's weekly reflections, there's monthly recaps. But if you can't afford $25 to $30 a month, there are plenty of other types of journals out there. Some of them are free. There's different styles. There's the Heroes Journal. I did a few free things. It didn't work for me, but might work for you. There's um, gamifying things on a your app. There's texting journals. There's all kinds of things. But one journal page that I found for my work wellness bulletin board, and it comes from a website called um, Trauma Research UK. And let me bring it up on my phone because I downloaded it. And of course, it never you never can find it when I want to talk to people. So find you can find it through Mental Health Daily Check In, and the website is Trauma Research UK. This is a great journal page that I have at work because you need to be able to check in with yourself. And sometimes when you're feeling really burnt out or having a stressful day. Having a bullet journal and starting from scratch is too overwhelming for many people and for me. But this one is great because it asks you, how are you feeling today? What things have triggered negative emotions? What solutions have I found in dealing with that? Gratefulness. What am I grateful for? What good things have happened today? What self-care practices have I done today? And what have I achieved? And then you rank your mental health. You can print off 
as many of these as you want or download it and then print it every day. I keep a stack at my desk and writing it out pen to paper, I think is the most therapeutic thing. And when I'm done with this or when I'm done with my journal at the end of the month, I throw it away. It's an act of release that is very, very therapeutic and helpful for me. Sometimes I even rip it up or I stick it in a shredder. It's, it's a great feeling to let it go. It's a form of brain dumping that I can handle and doesn't cause added stress or anxiety. The other thing is take a vacation, build in breaks, take your days off if you have the luxury of being able to do it. Um, I take mental health days, I take long weekends, and when I started engaging in that practice, it really helps. Guess what? You feel refreshed, you can rest, and you don't need to do a darn thing on those days if you don't want to. You need to start looking for inspiration. Maybe on those days off, you can do something you don't normally do. Watch a movie, go to a museum, breathe some fresh air. Getting out in nature and feeling grounded in nature has been very helpful for me. Watching the seasons, just sitting outside. I can't walk far and I'm working on that, but I can't. And just sitting outside in my car with the window down, looking at something beautiful or taking what I call nature rides and just taking pictures and looking at it. I take a lot of pictures so I can go back and remember because sometimes it's easy to forget the good things. Do your gratitude practice. Every morning I lift up things that are on my mind and I speak them in a meditative prayer and it's part of my morning coffee ritual. Light candles, breathe deeply, meditate, exercise, and whatever self-care practices you find. The biggest thing I found in recent years since my children have left home and I don't have other adult conversations outside of work as much is friendships. Join groups, join the, I know I'm a non-joiner. I found quote groups, very therapeutic. I have taken classes, made friends, kept in contact with them, go out to coffee, send texts back and forth. Um, what do they call that? Pebbling or where you leave little nuggets saying, Hey, did you see this new thing in the quilt, quilt world? What's going on today? Check in with your friends, your family, Work on community connections, whatever that means to you. Seek your true reason for showing up. Okay, this was one where people call it the North Star. And they usually in healthcare talk about, oh, you know, we show up. Why? Like, because we have this deep and burning desire to help people and we want to make a difference in the world. We want to do uh, our calling and purpose in life, sometimes I need to wretched it back and I call it keep it simple. Why do I like to work? Because I need lots of things that works gives me benefits, paycheck, and when I can't think of those things that it fulfills in me when I'm burnt out, then I go back to simple reasons like I have responsibilities. Um, if you can't work, then you start looking at ways to survive. When you can't craft, you start looking at, well, why did I enjoy it in the first place? And maybe I've done it so much, I'm bored with it, and I need to try something new. Play with color, paint, go outside, pick leaves, grow a plant. I bought one house plant, now I got 30. I have to have them in a special greenhouse area of my house now. Nurture yourself as well as something in nature. I'm going to put up my bird feeder up soon. So finding your outlet creatively doesn't mean you have to be making a queen size quilt or finishing Dear Jane. Two things that I don't know that I have 
the enjoyment of doing anymore. And it's okay to stop, pause, try something new, and be inspired in something new. The loving yourself and honoring your feelings, that's where journaling comes back in. And don't sit and believe things that your brain tells you that aren't true. Especially when you're burned out, we tend to feel negative. My points suck. I looked at that stitchy stars and I remember it being 10,000 times worse when, than when I pulled it out from being in timeout in its little box and went, you know, I remember being so frustrated with it that I wanted to throw it away. But two of the blocks are not as bad as I remember them, but they could be better. But if we can't figure out how to make them better, then I may throw them in as is and quilt the heck out of it and just use it as a table runner at Thanksgiving and pour gravy on it. Who cares? Right. Um, we need to look at ways to improve our situation, to lighten the mental load. And sometimes at work, um, I did ask a couple years ago to be taken off um, the mega amount of committees I was on and quote extra work that just creeped into my job because I said, look, I'm at the end of my career. I'm looking at retiring in a few years. And if you don't start getting the other nurses on board with some of this other committee work and specializing in those areas that need to be part of the committee, um, it's going to be terrible if, what if I drop dead tomorrow and then no one's going to do this work and nor will they know how to do it. So I, you know, kind of went to an extreme on that statement, but it did help my life a lot because now I'm down to only one committee. It's still hard work on that one committee, but it's something that I went and asked for help and I did get help on from my boss. The other part is I did something I've never done in my life right now. And I hired a housekeeper. She's coming once a month. I got several quotes. I did uh, as much research as I can locally and got a recommendation from my beautician because beauticians know a lot of good recommendations. Let me tell you, ask everybody you know if you're looking for help, professional help whether it's lightening the load in your crafting world. Like I have thought about taking some of my quilts to another long armor to finish. There's one in the group and paying her to finish a couple of them just for something different. I've thought about paying someone to bind my quilts for me and I'm getting a housekeeper to help do the tasks that I can't do. Um, if I didn't have my journal, I think getting counseling or therapy is a good thing. Getting help with my physical health. I've done physical therapy and chiropractic. I've taken vitamins and you eat healthy. You take care of your basic needs, but lighten the mental load. And sometimes that means you have to give the things that were always your job and you felt were, you were good at, but now you're burnt out on it. Maybe you need to have someone else do it for you. There's nothing wrong in that. I have a job so I can afford to pay someone a small amount of money once a month to clean my toilets, my shower, and mop and dust and whatever other job she chooses to fit in versus that's the type of relationship I have. And I was told she's very good. And guess what? She is a long armor in town who I know very well. It's her daughter. And I feel that she does not judge me for my crafting crazy. <laughs> you need to find someone like that. So that is my avoid, avoiding burnout, dealing with burnout. Try something new. Put things away. Get professional help. Find a way to get rid of the things that are holding you down and carrying this heavy mental load. Talk to your friends. Don't isolate, which I tend to do, but figure out how you get your energy back and 
where you're inspired because everything you hear online doesn't always apply to you. And I wound up doing all of this kind of investigative work on myself over the last few years because I kept thinking, you know, especially as I'm home more and I don't have a lot as much busyness in my life and I have a lot of time to overthink the things that I tend to overthink and feeling miserable with some of my chronic illness problems, which I'm past the miserable part, but it flares up once in a while. And that's when you find yourself going down the burnout road and not being inspired or creative because those are the things they say go back to. So what I'm going to say is a final thing on burnout is keep it simple. Ratchet it back. Go to something that you don't have to think about much. Granny squares. I learned it young. So here's the hint. Learn things young. Try it all out young because then when you get older and if your brain gets affected by some things um, like chronic illness and your my memory still is not what it used to be. I remember how to do a stockinette stitch. I can knit. I can do zen crocheting or crafting um, and just go back to the basics. I can sew nine patches. I can sew half square triangles on foundation paper and just keep it simple. If I can't do that, sometimes I just get a journal out and start writing or doodling. Sometimes you can get a coloring book out and color a page. Oh, there's a lovely coloring page in Silk and Sonder every month. And, you know, look at what you need to do to take care of yourself. And if that means you need to lay down and take a nap, great. Stop multitasking. Focus on one thing at a time and focus on how you feel and what you need to do to connect and find your people that make you feel safe and comfortable. I 100% believe in writing things out also. And, you know, sometimes you also got to take breaks and just do nothing for a few days like I did when I didn't feel good last weekend. And I watched a lot of Lord of the Rings and stitched and crocheted when I was able. And when I got a headache or felt drained from it, I put it away. So that's my thoughts on burnout. What are your thoughts on burnout? Do you disagree with me on some things? Did I get it wrong? Um, Give me your feedback on that in the show notes. Um, You can always email me at vholloway12345 at gmail.com. And I appreciate all of you. Uh, Thank you so much for listening. Really excited about the podcast for the winter. I have some fun things that I'm working on and want to keep sharing with you. And the other thing is uh, YouTube is going to be more short spaced. So if you follow me on YouTube, you can see them in the shorts or reels or I am on TikTok. Put them on TikTok also. Follow me whatever social media or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm also on Spotify and Apple. And if you leave me a review or interact with me, it really does help. And letting others know that I'm still around and I'm still posting. I still blog at least once a week. And you can find all of those links on my website, My Creative Corner 3. That in itself is something you can do that helps me out immensely. If you want to support the podcast, please use my affiliate link. I have one for Fat Quarter Shop and Silk and Sonder. And the other thing is share with your friends because it's always great to grow our community. My Creative Corner 3 Facebook group is another private group where you can chat and share projects. So thank you everyone and let me know how you deal with burnout, creative block, whatever you want to call it. And as we go into the holidays and lighten our load um, and focus on the peace and joy of the seasons, I hope that you're able to find that in your journey because this can be some really stressful times of the year for many, many people. I will talk to you in a couple of weeks and 
create on everyone.